I don't know if you know this. Today is the most, uh, probably the most unproductive workday of the year. It's Super Bowl money. They say almost 19 million Americans called in sick to work today. Can you believe that? Wait, where's Guillermo? Did he? Oh, no. Did Guillermo call in sick to work today, too? That is un... Oh, wait a minute. OK, no. You, can I just say, you did such a great job backing up Rihanna at halftime. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, and in fact, I don't know if you guys saw, but Guillermo is really like the star of the show at the Super Bowl. There he is. He's... Shining, shining bright like a diamond. And Rihanna yesterday delivered what has to be the biggest we're expecting announcement in the history of the world. Her belly comes out. Every living room in America just stopped waiting for someone, preferably a woman, to say something about whether... <laughs> Everyone's like, when did she have that last baby? And my wife was searching for her ovulation chart. <laughs> All hands were on deck at our house trying to figure this out. A afterwards, a spokesperson for Rihanna's stomach confirmed that she is indeed pregnant. She had a baby in May and now has another one in the oven. So if you're one of those uh, 19 million people who called in sick to work today, Rihanna last night had a nine month old in her dressing room. She was eight millimeters dilated, still managed to get out there and do her job. It was part of performance. Not only did she sound great, she closed the performance by, um, I don't know if you saw this, Really incredible, she closed the show by shooting down one of those UFOs. <laughs> Rihanna even got a raving lunatic of a review from old pigskin himself. Donald Trump went on Truth Social to post, epic fail. I don't know who teaches him these words, but. <laughs> Rihanna gave, without question, the single worst halftime show in Super Bowl history. This, after insulting far more than half of our nation, which is already in serious decline with her foul and insulting language. That's right, Captain <laughs> Grabber was offended by the, <laughs> the language on the, and then he, he capped it off with. Also, so much for her stylist. <laughs> is it possible that Trump is the bitch who owes her that money? Because I don't know where this comes from. The only part of the halftime show he liked was that all the dancers wore white hoods. Other than that, he's... Even Trump had to enjoy the game. It was a great game. The Eagles, uh, they were so tough. But uh, after the game, fans in Philadelphia were visibly upset. You see here, they're turning a car. Oh, what's that? You oh, this actually happened before the game. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I know they're disappointed in Philadelphia. They, have, they had a great team this year. You know what? Here's the thing. No matter which side you're rooting for, we all won last night because Michael Keaton is Batman again, right? I mean, and maybe that'll... Maybe that'll turn this country around. There were a lot of famous faces in the crowd last night, including uh, Jay-Z was there, Adele, Bradley Cooper, LeBron James was at the game, Kevin Hart was at the game, and this dynamic duo, Elon Musk and Rupert Murdoch at the game together, plotting dicks in a box, plotting the end of the world. Because <laughs> Kim Jong-un wasn't able to make it, so they... I don't know if you noticed, when Patrick Mahomes got to the line of scrimmage, he called out, 829, B32, Elon yelled, hey, that keep my son's name out of your effing mouth. <laughs> but um, Patrick Mahomes, as you probably know, he's gonna be here in just a bit. He's making his way over here. And while obviously Mahomes was the probably most, was the MVP, the most exciting player of the day, I think, was this little fella from the Puppy Bowl. He's a late night veteran used to talking smack. Expect plenty of wisecracks and witty comebacks to accompany his defensive sacks. Under the watchful eye of the official, here comes Jimmy Kibble. Well, that's kind of exciting. So then this game started. I'm not an expert when it comes to the rules of dog football, but it seems like more flags could have been thrown. Jimmy Kimmel is out of the tunnel, and majesty is in his face with some intimidation tactics. And Jimmy is looking to exit stage right. Now majesty and Benji are giving Jimmy Kimmel the business. Jimmy Kimmel with the claws to the face. Hey, is anyone gonna help Jimmy Kimmel out there? <laughs> What's wrong with people? 
By the way, all of this, the game, the commercials, the halftime show, the puppy bowl, Guillermo in this costume, it's all an elaborate cover-up to distract us from the UFOs that are suddenly plaguing our country. Have you been following? All of a sudden, there are more UFOs than Chick-fil-A's now. <laughs> the Air Force shot down uh, another unidentified flying object yesterday, the third one in four days. I never in a million years thought I'd say this. Where the hell is the Space Force? Why are they a thing? The White House today announced they've formed an interagency team to look into what's going on after initially refusing to rule it out. Today they said they do not believe these are extraterrestrial visits, which is exactly what they say at the beginning of every movie about extraterrestrial visits. <laughs> they do not yet know if, they are, if these are Chinese spy balloons like the one they shot down last week, but the one they shot down Saturday, they described as a small metallic Balloon. Remember the good old days when all we had to worry about balloon-wise was whether or not there was a boy inside one? <laughs> we have, uh, all right, we got a great show tonight. Uh, after the Super, you know, there were so many of these big commercials, high-profile commercials uh, yesterday, including two commercials for Jesus that cost $7 million. Jesus was like, Jesus. <laughs> you gotta, that, that's, but we also, on top of that, we got first looks at some of the big movies that are coming out, including The Flash, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Indiana Jones, all very exciting. And tonight, I'm proud to drop a preview trailer of our own. On March 12th, I'm hosting the Oscars here on ABC. And, thank you. And while we did not have, we did not have $7 million to air this during the game, but we're gonna bring it to you now at a much more reasonable price with no distractions, no uh, chicken wings or nachos to worry about. Here it is, the exclusive world premiere of my next big project, the Oscars. James Christian Kimmel, your reputation precedes you. Thank you. Not in a good way. No. This is Rear Admiral Bates. I'm Vice Admiral Bo Cyclone Simpson. That is an awesome name. I know. We've summoned you here today to talk about the Oscars. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting to be asked to host again. Well, let me be perfectly clear. You were not my first choice. Or my second choice. Or my third, fourth, fifth, or eleventh choice. In fact, we asked a lot of people before you. Well, I'd rather not know who they were. Let me tell you. Whoopi Goldberg, Tina Fey, Jon Stewart, Chris Rock. Letterman, Leno, Arsenio, Magic Johnson, Chevy Chase, a child dressed as a pirate. Well, those are pretty good. Steve Martin, Steve Carell, Steve Buscemi, Steve Austin, Steve Seagal, Steve Urkel, Steve from Blue's Clues. That's just the Steves. Did you ask Steve Harvey? Begged Steve Harvey. He would have been good. Good. Are you kidding? Steve Harvey would have been incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not important right now. Well, I'll tell him about the mission. The objective is the 3,332-seat Dolby Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. Inside is the 95th Oscars. A three-hour celebration. <laughs> three hours. Right. <laughs> A three-hour celebration of cinema featuring the biggest movie stars in the world. ABC has tasked us with finding a host who is unflappable and unslappable. Good. Oh, that's good, because I can't get slapped. I, I cry a lot. Tell us your plan of attack. Well, I'd probably start with a big musical number, one that would go a little something like this. The Oscars, the stars. OK, please, no singing. What about a dance number where I really I can do the robot. No dancing. Well, in that case, that's a big audience of very nervous, famous people. So I'd probably start with something self-deprecating to break the ice, joke about how I'm wearing two sets of Spanx, maybe something about the magic of storytelling. They love that. And then I'll lead a standing ovation for someone old. And if I make it out, there's only four or five hours left until we give best picture to hopefully the right movie. What do you think? I think we made a terrible mistake. I think he can do it. Double Admiral Crystal. 
Is there any way you could host? No, I have a dentist appointment. Sunday night. <laughs> Sunday? Listen, I've hosted this thing nine times, and I say give the kid a shot. Oh, wait, you know, I've hosted twice before. Really? Yeah. I didn't see it. No. You know, you don't have to take this job. I actually do. I went all in on crypto, and I'm about to lose my condominium. So, I mean, unless you got somebody better. I'm your guy.